In this video, I show you Dynamod Dungeon Set. But before we get into today's video, I just want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of June of 2022, we have this Dynamod Starter Box Set, a $165 value. We have three all-in pledges for Dungeon Lab, which is a Kickstarter starting on June 10th. We have a pledge for Dungeons and Lasers Encounters starting on June 14th. We have a pledge for Snap Ships, which is a Kickstarter happening next month. And then $100 to go towards a crowdfunding campaign, which the Patreon supporters will be voting upon. We'll probably be adding more to the list, so go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page to find out more information. Speaking of Patreon, one of my Patreon supporters has been working with me to create this incredible set. And I've just been amazed at the high quality that he's been able to produce to get it to the point where he can actually sell physical copies as well as created a Patreon page where supporters can receive all of the STL files to print out their own of this set. Go ahead and use the links below because I have links to both his website as well as his Patreon page. And for $9, you're going to have access to all of these different files. You can also purchase this starter box set on his website if you don't have a 3D printer. And you're going to be able to build out this dungeon set that you see before you. So Geert from Dynamod Games is the person who did create this. And you can tell he's an engineer because he totally problem solved the wall problem. But basically that issue is where uh, any kind of 3D printed dungeon set has the wall taking up some amount of space usually taking up some space on the squares where you can't fully fit a miniature. But he was able to completely problem solve this by this incredible set that uses really thin walls and allows for the width of the wall to be incorporated into the design of the dungeon. So I think that is a great solution. And because of that problem being solved, you are completely able to recreate any dungeon set or any dungeon map that you might see, including published Dungeons and Dragons modules, which is notoriously hard to recreate with your typical two by two square 3D dungeon set. If you haven't seen my video where I do an overview of the different options for 3D printing, go ahead and check that out here, where I talk more extensively about the dungeon wall problem and various ways that you can solve that. But to be honest, this set does more than any other solve that whole issue of where the width of the walls isn't taking up space where you're not able to use an entire square like you are with other sets. So I think this is a very elegant solution, relatively simple solution. And I love the fact that you can magnetize this board. And the unique thing about this that's different from Dragon's Rest is that the walls and the doors aren't magnetized. They just slot in really easily into these pegs and holes. And that is enough to hold them into place. As you can see here in the sample dungeon, I think it looks fantastic. There are some additional issues that is caused by having corners where you do need specialized pieces in order to incorporate um, the width of the walls. But again, I think Geert did a wonderful job in engineering a solution that fits all of that. He also created these doors to be opening and closing, which is fantastic. And overall, the examples that he has on his website, he has configured the game so that it can play with Hero Quest. And that is one of the boards that is notoriously difficult to recreate using 3D printed boards because of the wall problem. But I think this is a fantastic solution and it gives a lot of versatility, especially since you can remove each one of these floor tiles and you're able to slot in uh, other tiles. For example, drop a trap in there, a pit trap can fall in there. And um, as you can see here, he sent me some additional uh, floor tiles on top of these standard gray ones that come in the starter pack. So there are these wooden ones and a lot of different, you can print these out in different PLA colors and that will give you variety as well as the textures so that you can recreate the HeroQuest board. And the great thing about this is you do not have to paint. Now, obviously you, you don't have to paint anything that you 3D print, but this is an example of because you can print out these floor tiles individually and slot them in, 
you can go ahead and print out your base and then stick any of these tiles in there as well as reconfiguring them as needed. So in my view, I think this would be a perfect set for Madara where each individual tile is unique and variable and being able to swap that out would be super easy because I would just print out a basic six by six tile set which is standard to Madara and then I would just swap out these individual floor tiles as needed based on each scenario. So I think that is a great solution and I love the fact that this set is magnetized. You are able to clip these pieces into place in case you wanted to create height because magnets won't hold tiles together or you just print out the bases glued together and you can do that through Microsoft 3D Builder or any other software or just even put it in your slicer fuse together. So again, a ton of versatility. I do think that if you do have a 3D printer, go ahead and just become a Patreon supporter and you can print out to your heart's content. Even though I love to paint my terrain and have tons of painting tutorials, um, I think it's a great option for those of you who aren't into painting and don't want to bust out the paints. This is a great solution in creating a dynamic and colorful dungeon as you can see here. So let's go ahead and go into the unboxing so that you can see what all of the contents are and also see in action how to put together one of these dungeons. Here is the base box, starter box. And on the back, it lists all of the different items that's inside of it. So here's a note. And a nice parchment paper. Pretty much gives you instructions on how you're able to place everything. So this first tray has all of these different wall sections and doors and these are working doors which is great and I'm not quite sure what kind of PLA this is it has some specks of silver in it that's pretty cool and these are the various wall sections this tray has a bunch of the floors and it looks like he printed these top layers at 0.1 or maybe 0.15 millimeter height. There's a lot of detail to them. And these are the trap tiles. This middle box seems to be the clips, if you want to more permanently clip the pieces together, this is a nice box that has all of that. And then the final tray looks like all of the base tiles, and you're getting a lot of them. And look at the barrel magnets. I think these are 4x2s, if I'm not mistaken. And I just love the design where you're actually just pushing them in rather than gluing them on the edge. And it just makes for really clean design, able to snap together really easily. And it looks like this centerpiece is a two by one that makes it easier to print, stay together. And one of the features that I really like about this is that because of the polarity, for example, these won't snap together because of polarity, but it has to have this slot that goes in like this in order for it to go work together. So I think that's super ingenious, the way that Geert made that um, really distinguishable in terms of where polarity goes. And I think this whole section, yes, this whole thing is printed only as one piece. So obviously you only have magnets on the edges of this larger piece. These are the edges that clip on here. And you do need these because you need that slot for your walls to go into, whereas these ones have them built in. So I think this is an ingenious system that really an engineer would be able to put something together like this. 
So let's go ahead and see how quickly we can put together a sample dungeon. So we'll set some of these aside. Edge pieces as well. So you're getting some two by twos and then some one by twos. So it's giving you some variety as you put these together. So let's go ahead and just have a room like this. Now let's keep these edges on there. And technically you could do every other as long as you have this edge slot going on here. Some of these do have these slots like this where it can go up against one of the corner pieces like that. Okay, actually to navigate this corner, I did need to use the corner pieces or else it wouldn't fit. But fortunately, there are enough that you can navigate tight spots like that. And then Geert did send me some other varieties of tiles. I'm going to grab the wooden ones here for the hallway just to provide a different kind. And maybe it would have been better to put these on before the walls. Alright, so you can have Fog of War where you have characters basically uh, starting off in this room. Like this, let's grab some more heroes from Hero Quest. And then once they open a door, you can just slot it in like this. And that way you can build out the dungeon as you go along. So that's a really nice feature as well. And I feel like the walls are relatively thin and not too high because sometimes I feel like when you're sitting down at a table, when the walls are too high, I actually don't like it even though it's more realistic because you can't see items that are inside of the rooms. So for example, if there was a treasure chest or something like that, uh, sometimes if you're viewing it from a different angle, you, you have a harder time seeing it. But these walls I feel like are low enough that you can pretty much see into all of the rooms as you build it out. So this definitely takes care of the wall problem because you have these walls being super thin and you can build it out pretty much square by square which is exactly what you need for a game like Hero Quest in order to fully uh, recreate the board accurately and I also like the fact that these squares are slightly larger than 25 millimeters or one inch because you do have the gap for all of the walls so when you have miniatures with overhanging bits or parts that go beyond the one inch, I think this works out really well just to have that added space because it gives you a little bit more wiggle room as you're moving miniatures around. And then these uh, can pop out with your, just your fingernail if you want, but for those uh, that might get stuck, he does provide a prying tool where you can just dig in there and get it out like this or just push through the back like this and just to get those out. So there you go. I think, again, this is a fantastic set. Use the links below if you are interested in either purchasing the base box or becoming a Patreon supporter for $9 and getting all of the STLs. And he is constantly iterating and creating improvements, uh, new kinds of floor tiles as well. And so if you're interested, I think that's the way to go. It's relatively cheap to have access to all of these and then being able to print out as large of a dungeon as you want. Again, check out my Patreon page if you want to get in on the possibility of being chosen by Bob to receive this starter set with these extra floor tiles. So if you're interested, go ahead and check out that link and sign up to be a Patreon supporter. Otherwise, happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.